Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to talk about the USM-17 service pistol. We have talked about this handgun once before in a video that was really kind of dedicated to the modularity of the P320 system, but we also talked about the brand new, then released uh, M17 handgun. We haven't done a dedicated video for the handgun, so we're gonna kind of do that today. We're not gonna go into all the minute details for the most part, but I do wanna talk about one aspect of the handgun that I find particularly interesting, and that's the fact that the gun is cut for a red dot sight. That's a first for the US military. And that's a significant step forward, but I have some issues with it and the choice of red dot sights that the US military went with. And we'll talk about that later in the video. But I do wanna talk about the M17, do some more shooting with it, and just kinda of talk about it in general. But I also think what's interesting is the history behind the handgun. Now this handgun went up against a number of different guns in the MHS program, which is the modular handgun system program. And it kind of boiled down to what we now know as the 19X, but the 19X MHS handgun actually had a manual safety like the M17 does here, but we can't get that on the civilian market. Glock does weird things, can't explain it. I would love to have that handgun. But um, yeah, it came down to really this gun and the Glock. The 509 was eliminated, other entries were eliminated, and this handgun was chosen. Once again, it seems that it was chosen based on price. So SIG pulled a Beretta and went, you know, lowballed the government and won the contract. And I even believe that the, the testing ended early. At least that's the rumors that I've heard in favor of this handgun. I think Glock even sued over it, whatever. It always gets nasty over government contracts. But this is our new service pistol. Now I will say that this handgun has grown on me. I've never been a real big fan of the P320. SIG has this, this long-standing history, SIG USA does, of just taking a bunch of ideas, throwing them at a wall and seeing what sticks. This handgun started off as the P250, which was a market flop. The handgun was not popular. It was a double action handgun, had a hammer on it. So SIG thought, well, what the heck, we'll just yank the hammer out of it. We'll stick a striker fired assembly in it. That's why it looks a little bit awkward. It looks like it should have a hammer. That's because at one point it did. And then they threw it out on the market and this one stuck to the wall in a big way. The P320 has a huge following. And now it's gonna have an even larger following because it's been adopted by the US military as the M17. The US Navy also adopted this handgun as the M18 and it has a compact slide on it. I've only seen that in pictures. Maybe SIG will release a version of that handgun. I hope so because they're really kind of neat. I prefer the shorter uh, slide. But anyway, so this is my first gun. This one um, had some issues with regards to having a full 17 round magazine. If you watch the video on the M17 done by the Firearms Blog TV, their YouTube channel, TFB TV, check it out because they do a really good job talking about the pistol breaking it down. And um, it, it was a really informative video, but they ran into the exact same problem that I did. And when you put a full 17 round magazine into the gun with the slide home, they were actually having problems with pulling the slide rearward as well to the point where the shooter actually cut his fingers and bled all over the gun. That's how hard it was for him to pull the slide to the rear. Now this one's been shot a little bit. This is a full 17 round magazine. This has some Fiocchi 124 grain ball in it. It's from our friends over at LAX Ammunition. And I'm just gonna see how much this one has improved. Full 17 round magazine inserted and it's broken in nicely. Had no problem pulling the slide to the rear. All right, so I'm gonna fire off these 17 rounds, then we're gonna move over to the second M17 that we have out here today that has a red dot sight on it. All right, let's check it out with the red dot sight. This is the M17 with the Leupold Delta Point Pro installed. This sight is a little bit different than previous versions of the Delta Point. This one has a metal piece that protects the lens, which is a good thing because I've actually broken the lens on one of these already and that wasn't me purposely trying to break it. That was just regular use me breaking it. And yeah, it, this, this is the only sight that this gun is cut for. SIG did not win the contract for the red dot sight, which is a Romeo 1 series. And I think that was probably a good call on the government's part. 
Uh, they've never impressed me with their quality. Lots of reports of the Romeos breaking. Uh, the Delta Point slightly better. The original Delta Point was problematic. This one uh, should be a little bit better. I haven't tested it as, it as extensively as I have its, its predecessor, but with this metal protective outer shell here, that should uh, resolve the issues that I had with it. The Delta Point has a nice large screen, so you have you know, a large area to quickly pick up that red dot sight. It's considerably larger than what you'll find on the Trigicon RMR, which is my preferred sight, because I know for a fact I can take an RMR and literally drive nails with it, and the thing will stay together and work. I don't know about this. So the other thing that we have on the handgun is an Enforce light. This is our compact light. The reason I went with this, which is a 200 lumen light versus the 400 lumen light, and I'll go ahead and show you guys that the weapon is empty, have no magazine inserted, there's nothing in the chamber. But the reason I went with the shorter, less powerful light is because the lens is set back from the muzzle. The 400 lumen light sticks out to here, and very quickly it becomes carbon caked from the muzzle blast. So I chose to go with the smaller unit, which sets back a little bit, in the hopes that we won't get so much carbon buildup on the front. Now this is a brand new handgun. I traded an old AR-15 for it to our, uh, a local store. Uh, it's Bly Sports in Valparaiso, Indiana. Uh, they've had these hanging on the wall. They're not moving as quickly, and they are more than willing to trade me an AR-15 for this handgun. And uh, I just got it out to the range for the first time today, put the red dot sight on. It's not as simple as other handguns to install the sight on. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we take the gun apart. But the other thing I noticed is right here, you're already starting to see the PVD finish failing. It's rubbed white, and that's just it rubbing up against the polymer frame of the gun. A little bit of a finish wear where it's gone through to the steel. Not impressed with that. Matter of fact, I've never been impressed with SIG's PVD finishes in general. If you get online and Google the SIG Legion, one of the biggest complaints about that gun is its PVD finish, and it fails. It bubbles off, flakes off, just rubs off. It's a horrible finish, and it doesn't look like it's going to fare much better on the M17, and uh, perhaps they'll wind up going with something that's a little bit more abrasion resistant, something like maybe Cerakote. So we'll see how that, that pans out. I'm pretty sure these things are going to turn white fairly quickly in military use. But, all right, so the red dot sight on this handgun is a little bit crazy looking. It's big because it is the Delta Point. I have a 2.5 MOA red dot on it, and it's really easy to pick up again because that large viewing area, the large screen. I'm going to go ahead, leave the slide home, have another 17 round magazine. Now this handgun doesn't have very many rounds through it. I've only fired about two magazines through it, zeroing the red dot sight. And I'm going to insert the 17 rounds into this gun. And I noticed right away that this gun right out of the box had no problems with me being able to charge the weapon on a full magazine where my other one, I darn near couldn't get the slide to the rear for the first few hundred rounds, but it's broken in. All right, so let's shoot this with the red dot sight. Then let's take the gun apart. I'll show you how the red dot sight is installed, and I'll talk a little bit about why I'm not a real big fan of this particular generation of red dot sights and why I think it's a horrible choice for military and law enforcement applications. So, you know, we have a target about eh, 15, 18 yards away, and it's hitting him right in the center of the chest, maybe a little bit right. Uh, I, I shoot the guns a little bit right off the bag. We had it perfectly zeroed, so it may, for the way I hold it, want to turn it back just a little bit. Anyway, it shoots really nice. I like the big screen um, or the lens or whatever you want to call it, but um, yeah, now let's talk about why I think this particular generation of red dot sights probably is the best choice for the military. The M17, just the base model, comes in a plastic box like this. Now keep in mind, there is a collector series that comes in a cardboard box. And if you get the collector series, you have to contact SIG's customer support, 
And then you can also purchase a wooden case, a challenge coin, and a letter of authenticity that has your gun serial number on it. I know the wooden box costs 200 bucks and what the other stuff costs, I don't know, but you have that option for the collector series. The only real difference between the guns is the fact that the current standard production guns that aren't limited in numbers, the limited edition or limited to 5,000, have black controls and the limited edition guns have flat dark earth controls. The current military issue handguns, they've got, they moved away from the flat dark earth and moved to black, so technically this is a full copy of the original military service handgun. So you get it in this little plastic box. It's a nice little range case. It is not TSA approved, I don't believe, but it does have a little lock hole here if you decide to, to lock it. But if you're gonna travel with the TSA, I would definitely get something else, get a Pelican case or something like that. But not a bad, bad little range box. Go ahead and open it up and on the inside, you'll find your M17 with two magazines and all your SIG swag, owner's manual. Oh, here's a picture of the, uh, the presentation case you can buy for the collector series. Now, maybe you can buy collector's case for your standard model as well. It seemed, I don't know why else they'd put that in here, but um, have a stitched, it's not a PVC patch. I don't think, yeah, it looks like it's stitched M17 patch for your jacket or your range bag and a lock and safety flag and this piece, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute. All right, so that's everything that comes in the box. It's neat that SIG put these on the market for the general population because everybody's gonna want the service pistol. I do, obviously, I think it's neat being able to have it. So here's the handgun configured, you know, all tricked out. We have the light on it. I don't believe the Enforce light is the military light they're going to use. I don't think I recall reading anything as to what the military is actually going to use as a light, assuming they've even picked one. But I stuck the Enforce on there. Up here, this is definitely the site that the military selected. As I mentioned previously, this site was selected over the Romeo series, which I believe was a good move. I would have preferred the RMR, but um, yeah. This one should be a little bit more durable than previous generations. Now, what's interesting about this red dot side is back here on the rear, there's a little plate that slides out and as an add-on, you can attach a rear sight to this. That's handy because SIG and their plate, the tritium rear sight is attached to the plate that you must remove to attach the red dot sight. Now, even if it were on there, the rear sight would be too low to see through the red dot sight, so it makes sense that if you're gonna run the red dot sight, you're giving up your iron sights. I'm not sure that's a wise idea for military applications, and let me go into that for a little bit. There's only one sight on the market, a red dot sight, and it's a brand new product from Aimpoint. It's not technically for sale yet. I'm trying desperately to get my hands on it. It's called the Acro, and it's a completely encased red dot sight system. So you have a lens in the rear, a lens in the front, and none of the electronics are exposed to the elements. These handguns, if you go from an air-conditioned car out into a hot, sweaty, 100-degree environment with high humidity, this is going to fog over and you're not going to be able to see through it. If I drop this gun in the mud and pick it up, I have no way to aim the gun except to point shoot it because mud can get into the LED emitter, which is back here. Mud can get into the screen. I can't easily wipe it off. If you get water on the screen and it sticks, you'll have a thousand red dot sights versus just one. Just in general, this type of red dot sight is not ready for prime time for military law enforcement use. So the fact that the military even bothered to do this is a little bit backwards thinking, and it tells me they didn't give much thought to it, nor did they do much testing. Now, the Acro is going to be nice because, again, it's encapsulated. With the, if you, first of all, it's, it's not going to make a difference because it'll have nitrogen gas in, internally, I would suppose, like any red dot sight, so it's not going to fog up. And if you drop it in the mud, all you have to do is wipe off that rear lens. You don't need to see through the sight. It becomes an occluded eyesight. And as long as you can bring it up and see a dot, and even if it's black, you put that dot on the target, it's still gonna hit the target. You don't need to see through the sight for it to work. It's just like a Comp M2 or a Comp M5 or any other optic like that that is completely encapsulated, which is very popular on fighting rifles. So the military doing this tells me that just a bunch of geeks sat around and just thought about, hey, what can we do that's really cool and new? And they just randomly selected a reflex sight that um, really shouldn't be on the handgun at all. So hopefully the military figure that out. And if they do go to red dot sites, hopefully they'll consider the acro or sites that are like it because this is a joke. All right, so to field strip the gun, we're gonna go ahead and show you that. 
Again, this is the plate that I took off. It does have tritium night sights in it, front and rear. To field strip it, I'm just gonna go ahead and lock the gun open like this. Check to make sure that the weapon's empty. And then you have a takedown lever, just like most modern autos. I'm gonna go ahead and flip that takedown lever down. Release the slide. I have ambi slide controls. They're on both sides of the gun. And I have ambi safeties on both sides of the gun. Right now the safety is off. All right, got the, the takedown lever forward, release the slide and just pull it off the gun. You're gonna notice I did not pull the trigger. All right, so now you can see the inside of the gun. This is just a standard P320. It's a modular trigger system. And yeah, it's a P320. Matter of fact, the recoil spring, which is captive and metal, does not bend, it's a metal recoil spring guide and your standard barrel. On the inside, you can see the striker assembly here, and there are two holes right here. There are, these are the two holes that hold this mounting plate in place. You can see the screws that I have here. Okay, this is the exact orientation that they would be if this were still on the gun. You have to go into these holes to unscrew these screws to take the plate off. Everybody else does the exact same thing, except you take the screws off the top, the plate comes off the top, there's no reason to go into the actual slide. A potential problem with lots of use, you'll have people wanting to take these off and play with them in the field. When the Loctite goes bad, the screws come loose. Now the screws can drop down into the action of the pistol, and I can only imagine what type of chaos that can cause. So again, the government deciding to go with a reflex sight that really isn't well suited for military applications, putting screws on the inside seems kind of counterintuitive to me. I wouldn't design a gun that way, but I'm not an engineer, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express and I could be one, and I play one here on YouTube, but I wouldn't have done that. To make matters worse, to do something as simple as to remove this plate, you can get to this screw just fine. This one is behind the extractor spring. So you have to push the extractor spring down, take your, your rear plate off, take the extractor completely out of the gun. Now you can get inside to the screw to finally take the plate off. It's an involved process, it's not difficult, it's just time consuming and pointless because all could have been fixed if they would have done like everybody else and just put the screws on top. And if those screws backed out, the plate simply would have fell off, um, which it would have done anyway if they back out on the inside, but you wouldn't have screws falling into the action of the gun or potentially just falling out back here maybe and harmlessly falling to the ground, who knows? I'm not gonna try it because I don't wanna break my gun. These things are not in inexpensive. So that's basically how you would field strip the M17. Now, hopefully the grunts in the field won't be taking these apart. I've heard rumors that the trigger mechanism's actually pinned in these. Um, you, can, you can take the takedown lever out. I don't know if that's true or not on the military versions, but um, yeah, it would make sense that you wouldn't want grunts in the field taking the modular trigger system out. Why the military wanted that, I have no idea. Giving that to a grunt, having them having the capability of taking the trigger out would be kind of dumb to do because grunts like to break things and lose things. And if there's no reason to do something, don't let them do it. <laughs> but anyway, all right, so to put it together, fairly simple, put it back together, put the barrel in. It's a simple browning type action. Put the spring on. And this is where things get weird. It's because I do things wrong but when I put the, the slide on, lock this down, let the slide go home. If I go to put a magazine in it, oh, it worked that time. Sometimes you can't put a magazine in it. And to fix that, you just lock the slide to the rear, drop it, then the magazine will go into the gun. Let's, I'm gonna give it one more try here, see if I can get it not to go together. Try, what was it, I pull the trigger, I do something, I don't know what it is, put it back together. Put the slide on, and there you go. That's the situation. No matter how hard you try to get that magazine in the gun, it's simply not gonna go in. You can run the slide. Magazine still won't go in, but if you run into that situation, drop the slide, and the magazine goes into the gun, all right? So you don't need to pull the trigger to take the gun apart. That might be what causes the, uh, the situation, people trying to pull the trigger. So anyway, overall, very simple. Um, as long as the grunts stay out of the trigger mechanism, a very easy gun to maintain in the field. And I really do like the way the gun feels, handles, and shoots. I would say that it's definitely more ergonomic than the handgun I think should have had the contract, which is the Breda M9A3. It would have made more sense. But 
you know, that's history. This is a new service pistol. And like I said, it's growing on me. Before we do some more shooting, I want to talk about some of the features of the Leupold Pro, Delta Point Pro. Now, with some of the other red dot sights on the market, you have to physically take the sight off by taking the two screws that hold it to the gun out and then put a battery in from the underside. Why is that a bad idea? Well, it messes with your zero. Every time you mount and unmount that red dot sight, you're running into potential for zero shift. With the Delta Point, replacing the battery is as simple as pushing on this little lever here, pushing it this way and the little lid pops up and you can see the CR2032 sitting inside. Now for a military site, I would say this is a bad design. They should find a way to make this a little bit more positive and locking than simply sliding something over. And it doesn't take much effort to do so. It's a great way to drop your battery in the field if you're uh, in the field. The controls for the site are a button right here in the center. So to press to turn on, press and hold to turn off, and then you have eight brightness settings. And you can cycle through them that once the sight is on, just press and release, press and release, press and release. It'll get dimmer and then get brighter. And again, you have eight settings total for the red dot sight. To make adjustments to elevation and windage, you have a simple you know, screw adjustment here on the top that's clearly marked up for counterclockwise and over here you have counterclockwise as being right. So fairly straightforward. Again, there's that little cover for the rear sight accessory that you can add later. I don't think that rear sight accessory is going to work too well with the front sight because the front sight's too low. I imagine it'd be very tough to zero with that. I don't know, but I'll order one, try it out, see what I think, and let you guys know. All right, like I said, the gun has full ambi control, so right or left-handed shooters can easily manipulate the weapon. You have a safety which locks the trigger on both sides of the gun, so left or right-handed shooters can easily manipulate that safety. I'll also note that when I do not have a magazine in the gun, the gun will fire. There is not a magazine disconnect safety on the M17. You can reverse, very simply take the slide off, you can get down inside there, very easy to reverse the magazine release. Right now it's set up for right-hand operation, but within a few seconds, I can easily convert it to left-hand operation. So it's a, it's a very ambi-friendly handgun. Got 15 rounds loaded here. Go ahead and charge the weapon and just do some more shooting with this handgun, which I really, like I said, am coming to like quite a bit. And my red dot sight's not on. So I'm gonna press and hold to turn it on. I turned it off when I took the battery out. <laughs> and that's what I love about red dot sights. I can't get this darn thing to turn on now. <laughs> I know the battery's in there. Maybe I've just dimmed it because I was pushing on it. There we go. I just dimmed it because I was pushing on it. So you don't really know what brightness you're at. And when you put your finger in there to adjust it, you're blocking the LED emitter, which is back here, that's firing towards the glass. Now with fingerprints and smudges, that dot becomes very fuzzy. Um, again, just not a good design for current uh, military law enforcement applications. And it's still a questionable design for um, even civilian use for self-defense purposes. Magazines drop free. Slide stop works cleanly as a slide release. The gun shoots nice and flat. These are full power 124 grain NATO loads. And my group is slightly to the right. So everything seems to stay 
mounted, I do recommend using a little bit of extra Loctite when you put those screws in, because you don't want this coming loose. Would I carry the gun like this? Absolutely not. I have no option other than to point shoot should this thing become fogged over, dropped in the dirt or mud, and render it useless. I still think iron sights are the way to go until sights like the Acro come onto the market and we have a chance to see if they're going to work. One other thing that's interesting to note that you have to be aware of when you're taking this plate off, you have a little spring and a loaded chamber indicator right here by my index finger. When you take that plate off, that will pop out or fly out or fall out, so you wanna be aware of it. It's just a spring and a little metal arm. And also when you take the uh, spring out for your extractor claw, the extractor claw will fall out as well, but it's three parts, a rod, a spring, and a claw, and this is just a claw and a spring. So um, not difficult to do. I didn't even watch a tutorial. It's not necessarily in the, ma the uh, owner's manual, I don't believe. Actually, I think it is. It tells you how to get that out of there. Uh, but again, not very problematic at all to do. And this gun is smoothed out really, really nicely. And I'm really wearing on that finish, which is unfortunate. My other one doesn't have that finish wear. This one's getting it, and it's just doing so because it's rubbing. It's not perfectly aligned with the polymer frame, and it's rubbing on it. Going to have a white line down one side and no marks on the other. I may wind up Cerakoting it in the future so it has a more durable finish. So I've had a good time out here shooting the M17 with the Loophole Delta Point Pro on it and the Enforce APLC Compact Light on it. The light you can pick up from coppercustom.com and the loophole you can pick up from Optics Planet. So the gun, as it's configured, is a lot of fun to shoot. I, I, I won't say otherwise. You guys know I'm a fan of red dot sights. I'm trying to become accustomed to running them on defensive carry handguns. I do have my Walther, uh, my, my little PPS, with the uh, shield sight on it. I've carried it off and on, but I know the shortcomings of this generation of red dot sight, and I'm really looking forward to the evolution of these sights because I do think at some point they will become just as practical and just as useful as the modern red dot sight has become on a modern fighting rifle. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and run one last magazine out of the gun. I will say that this is a standard pick 1913 rail down here. It doesn't have a Glock cut on or anything. I'm running just a standard Enforce on here. But um, yep, the gun has forward slide serrations. If that's the way you like to do things, I don't. And yeah, the ergonomics seem to be really darn good and the gun certainly shoots very well. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We're 100% viewer supported. SIG doesn't pay us to do videos. Ruger doesn't pay us. CZ doesn't pay us. We are 100% viewer supported. That keeps us honest so we can say what we want, when we want, and we don't expect freebies from companies. And we don't expect paychecks. Also, if you'd like to pick up a t-shirt that directly supports us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is just to follow the link down below to forgedfromfreedom.com. Go to the Mac collection, pick out your favorite t-shirt, buy it, and that supports us here at the channel. And last but not least, be sure to check out coppercustom.com. All right, guys, we're going to fire off these last 15 rounds, clean up the gun, put it away in the safe, and maybe break it out again at some point in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you guys soon.